Aloha friends and yogis, my name is Nicole Spirit. This is Puppy Finn from Hawaii. This is his task today to get this little toy out of the Kong. And here's Puka Dog from California. So happy for you to be here today. Today's class is about Honu and it's about the green turtle from the Hawaiian Islands that if you've been lucky enough to swim with, you know how magical and mystical they can be, and it doesn't have to be a Hawaiian turtle, it can be any turtle. So, honu is also a word that in the Hawaiian language means earth, and it's a representation of how the earth looks swimming through the cosmos, this beautiful blue-green planet, and it swims through the cosmos and it looks like a turtle. And one of my favorite little sayings about the turtle is that because it has its shell on its back, it's always at home. So I really, really love that analogy. So we're coming into a space today where we're gonna really try to feel at home. So thank you so much for joining. The hardest part is just to get here. Yes, get on the mat, depending on your time of day or time of the month or time of the year, depending on which year it is, you might have woken up feeling other than perfect and that's okay too, because in all honesty, that's how I woke up as well. <laughs> so I'm happy to be here. I'm super excited to teach us a few poses and today we're certainly going to access or turn tune into the beautiful turtle in the yoga world, see what that posture looks like. So today we're gonna to start in our easy pose, Sukhasana, so please make your way down onto the mat, get into a comfortable position, and then once you arrive, pull your sitting bones back so that you get a nice rooting and anchoring through the base of your spine. And we're just gonna find a few ha breaths. Because of my work studying with Lomi Lomi Massage, Hawaiian Massage, um, and also just being super interested in Hawaiian mysticism, what they call huna. Um, I just have loved and incorporated so much of the mysticism of Hawaii into my yoga practices over the years. So we take our arms by our sides, and this is my favorite way to get spiritual. Take a big deep breath, connect your head to your heart, connect the non-physical to the physical, and what we're going to do is our big angel wings. So we're going to take our arms up, big inhale, breath. And then, ha. Ah, big exhale of the sound, ha, ah, on the way out. We're going to do eight together. <clears throat> Excuse me. So wherever you are, let's get into a nice position. And maybe use your imagination to feel like you're a swimming, beautiful turtle in the most pristine, gorgeous blue ocean water you could ever imagine. Arms at your sides, inhale up. share the breath is how we share the life. See if you can slow things down. Two more. And if you're practicing these on your own, do them in rounds of four. Our last one. And I just got the little image of being one of those little tiny hatchlings of a turtle. And you gotta make your way across all the sand and all the tourists and all the beach and get to the ocean and hope that you may survive. <laughs> so let's take our hands to our heart. One hand over the other and just pause for a moment. Breathe and feel yourself go into your body. Think about the essence of how it feels to go home 
And I was reading a Thich Nhat Hanh book yesterday, and they said that in Vietnamese, they refer to the other person as my home. So for example, your spouse, um, and they'll say, you know, my home is out grocery shopping. So I thought that was so beautiful, and isn't it a nice analogy to think about ourselves being at home, we're in ourselves, we're present, we're taking deep breaths, and we're feeling calm, and we remember what the actual word yoga means, the union, or, or pardon me, or the yoke of the body and the breath and the soul, the body, the breath, and the mind. Sometimes soul and spirit are synonymous. So depending on your belief system with that, it's a very beautiful thing. Let's just take one more breath, being aware of our heart center, our anahata chakra in the yogic world, and feeling like we're at home in our own shell, in our own body. <clears throat> Good. And then we're going to ever so gently just relax our hands. Let's do a nice spinal flex exercise just to wake up the spine. This is the one one where our hand stays on our ankles, and we're gonna lift the chest to come into our inhale breath, and then we're gonna round the spine and come into exhale breath. So you get into a little flow here, go at your own pace, and definitely notice that this is a spinal cord breathing type of exercise. Your whole spine is getting involved here. Then we're going to transition slightly to doing a ocean wave breath. And if you're familiar with the oceanic breath, the ujjayi breath, we can do that breath as well. So come up to a nice tall spine, pause for a moment. The game is get the bone out of the calm. Finn is doing really well. So ujjayi breathing, we're going to constrict the jalandra bond the neck or throat lock just slightly and it's almost like you're making the sound ah, on your exhale but your mouth is closed so there's a little bit of a energy of your throat coming in and kind of sealing or locking so we inhale as though you're making the sound ha or ah but your mouth is closed same thing on the exhale Good. You don't have to do this breath, but it's also called the victorious breath, and it just automatically increases our lung capacity. So now we go into the ocean wave. We scoop forwards on the inhale, and round the whole spine on the exhale. So a little bit of a different movement than the first one, and we want to really feel that energy as we go through the whole spinal column, bathing the brain with spinal fluid, the spinal column, moving your cerebrospinal fluid around. Let's do three more breaths. Then we'll settle at a nice tall spine. So pause for a moment, drop your shoulders down, and we'll just do a nice release for the neck and the shoulders. So take your arms and swim them right out in front of you, and then gently open up through the chest. Arms swim behind you, and if it's available, clasp in your fingers. See how this feels to open up the chest, to open up your shoulders. Maybe you lift your chin a little bit opening up the neck, opening up your throat chakra, your truth, the blue truth, throat center, satnam, truth is my name. One more breath. Good. And if it feels nice, you might even do a little bit of a forward fold here and let your arms stay grounded behind you. And then we come gently back up. So let's release the arms now. Let's give the wrists a little shake. See if it even gets into the elbows a little bit and maybe up even into the shoulders. We get a little bit of motion here. Then we're gonna take our right hand and make four circles up and around, opening up the shoulder. Good. And then gently leave your right hand down and left arm floats up and around. 
open up the shoulders nest. See if there's anything stuck there. I was calling last year the year of the caterpillar or a little turtle hatchling, and this is the year of the turtle swimming in the ocean. So let's gently come off of our seat now. We're gonna arrive on our hands and our knees, and we can grip a little bit with our fingers before we press off and away into downward dog. So when you're ready, get that nice length in your spine, curl your toes under, zip up through the core, and then gently lift up through the knees and the hips. You can walk your dog, lifting and lowering through the knees. You can pause, push the ground away. And again, another nice thing to do is bend the knees, send the hips really up high, and just let this beautiful energy bathe your brain of your own blood and endorphins and feel good energy. And if you need a bit more, you can lift and lower off of your toes. That's a nice little variation. And have you ever tried to do a one-armed dog? So just see what it would look like to engage that core and bring your right hand to your left ankle and hold for a breath. Wow, the first time I tried it, super challenging. Then we lift off the left hand and bring it over to the right ankle and hold for a breath. Excellent. And then we're going to release down onto our hands and our knees. Let's give the wrists some love and just gently take the fingers out to the sides. Open your fingers as much as you can. Find that nice core engagement. And then one more variation. Perhaps you bring your hands all the way back to face your knees. Open up those fingers. Maybe you lift up through the head and the shoulders and the neck. Good, and then gently release, come back to flat spine. Take your hands slowly back to center. Another nice thing to do, we can walk onto our toes here, and we can do a child's, or a hero's pose, pardon me, um, with our feet flat, or you can curl your toes under. Then we take the hands and the wrists together, interlace your fingers, and just gently make a motion with your wrists. Then we open it up a little bit more, start to open up your elbows, and then even get into the shoulders. Good. Then slow it down, slow it down, come back to center. Depending on your foot placement, let's release all together now. Bring your hands back in front, bring your legs back behind you. And today we're going to try dolphin pose as well as we're honoring our sea creatures with their beautiful fins. All right, bring your arms down, 90 degree bend in the elbow. You can clasp your hands together. And then again, we're gonna do the same motion with the legs as we do for down dog. So take a moment, lift up the hips, let your head be below your heart, and breathe. And again, same thing, you might wanna pedal it out here. One more breath. If this is brand new for you, it might be a teeny bit challenging. So see how you feel. Good. Next breath, we're going to lower down through the knees. Let's come off of our hands and start to stand up. And today, we're going to stand up without using the hands at all. So just see if you can make your way up to a standing position. And now we're going to do the four stretches recommended by George St. Pierre. <laughs> so this is beautiful. We're going to start in our Tadasana Mountain Pose, we're going to lift up our toes, and if you're not aware of who he is, he's a very famous Canadian wrestler who's now going much more yogic because, of course, working out and <clears throat> doing a lot of punching and kicking is hard on the body. So it's said that yoga is one of the beautiful types of exercise that actually gives you more energy than it took away, so I'll just leave that with you as a thought but you don't have to go into it. <laughs> All right, let's think about lateral bend. I love this because we're gonna honor now the six directions that our spine moves. Take the arms up, big inhale breath, and then we're gonna tip to the left. You can interlace your hands, and another variation is just to leave that left arm down. So a nice big stretch, create that half bow or half moon position here. Good. And then ever so gently, we come back up to standing, lower your arms wherever they are, 
Keep your breath going, then we bring the arms up, and then we're going to go to the right. So again, over to the right, right arm comes down. Hey, hey. Right arm comes down or stays up, and your hands can be clasped in what's called temple mudra. Good. Then we're going to gently come up to standing, lower the arms down, and now we're going to honor the spine and the next two directions that it can move. So laterally, side to side. Now we're just gonna do a simple twist. So take your arms out in front and twist to the right. Your hips and shoulders stay facing forwards as much as possible. Good, and then gently bend the knees, come back to center, and twist to the left. Your fingers can wiggle, you can look behind your left shoulder, and keep your hips and your knees facing that same direction. Good, let's do it one more time. Swing to the right. You can bounce for a moment. Go into your spine, breathe into where you need it. Come back to center, go the other way. Good, going from turtle hatchling to full blown turtle. Good, coming back to center and gently we'll float the arms down. Honu, another word for turtle is haumea, which is the word for earth in Hawaiian. All right, we're gonna take our arms now out to the sides. We do a little forward fold, bend the knees, and then on the exhale, we come into palm tree, just swaying back gently. So getting a little bit of a back bend. Try not to compress your low spine. So you lengthen on the inhale, and then exhale and tilt back. Good, let's do two more. Palm tree, Tamara, and sometimes I dedicate my classes to my friends. Okay, come back to center. Ooh, almost made the heart fly off the wall. I've done that before. Can't remember what class it was, but it was pretty funny. Okay, good. Now we're going to go down to the floor. We're going to get ready for Haumea, but I wanted to do one more pose where we try Puka. We're going to try our half moon pose today. What's she talking about? All right, here, me. So take your block or book if you have one. And we're gonna take it in our right hand and we're gonna turn our foot out 90 degrees. We're gonna take our block and we're gonna project it out in front of our toes and we're gonna gently just balance on the block. This might be your half moon today, Ardha Chandrasana. If it's available, maybe you lift your left arm and maybe you lift your left leg a little bit. Look at something not moving to maintain your balance. Engage that core. And if you need to, you do this against a wall. Good, half moon pose, excellent. And then depending on your level, you can always lower the block or eventually get rid of it. So now bend your right knee, pick up that right block, that block I should say in the right hand, and then switch it over to the left. Let's take a moment, you're gonna turn your left foot out 90 degrees, toes facing out to the side. Take your block, bring it out in front of your toes a few inches, and again, find a place where you can balance, and if it's available, you start to pick up that right leg. Maybe not, maybe you're just gonna try this today. All right, so we've got a few options. I do recommend doing this against a wall if available, and that keeps you really nice and balanced. Good, eventually you're gonna to get to the place where you don't need a block, and your next variation is to take that left hand off the floor and touch your heart. Good, that's really challenging, so only play with what you've got going on today. Bend your left knee, right foot comes down, and gently come back up to standing. Very nicely done. Let's make our way to the floor. We're going to do Janyo Shirsasan. What? <laughs> One leg forward fold. So bring your left foot in and keep your right leg nice and long. We're gonna turn our whole chest to look over to our right leg. Big inhale breath, tall spine, and use your exhale breath to walk down. Good, see how this feels. Take your time and you can also leave your knee nice and bent. And enjoy. Find your breath and really just attach a little gatha 
or a little saying of joy to each breath. For example, inhaling, I feel peaceful. Exhaling, I let it go. This is a good reminder to flush your emotional toilet every single day. Don't hang on to that stuff, let it go. Gently walk yourself back up, bring your chest to center. Let's release the left leg long and the right leg floats in. I'm so happy with my new yoga leggings because they're for adult children. <laughs> Anyways, I was kind of giggling. I, like, they're the same size as what I normally wear, but I was like, they're in the kids department. Anyways, bring your chest, look over your left leg, toes can stay up, knee can be a little bit bent, forward fold, one leg bent. Inhale up, exhale, bring your navel in towards your spine, and your hands might arrive on your thigh, they might arrive in front of your knee, they might go all the way to the foot. And it doesn't matter, it's all about how you're feeling today, what you're doing, and I'm super proud of you for showing up for Honu Yoga. And as I mentioned, my dearest friend Tamara, let's start to walk back up the palm tree. Um, I was lucky enough to swim in the beautiful ocean in Hawaii with her and we did get to swim with the turtles. We were uh, snorkeling. All right, let's take the feet out wide now. So this is dragonfly pose where our legs are wide and we're going to bring ourselves forwards. If this is way too much for you, keep one leg folded in or both. So we're gonna sit up nice and tall if you still have your block around. It's very useful. You can use it on your exhale to help you prop up. So inhaling, the arms are forwards. Exhaling, we're bringing the chest, the heart forwards down instead of just lowering your forehead to the floor. And you might take a place where you're like, yeah, that feels really good to put my forehead and rest my third eye on this block. Now, the first time I tried this, I was nowhere near this height. So please just honor where you're at today. When you're opening up the right side, it's the yang or the masculine, and the yin is on the left, the feminine, the moon. Good. So wherever you are, let's start to walk back up now. And we're going to bring our legs a little bit closer in. So bring them in, and if you need to, you can shake them out. Actually, let's just do that. It feels super good. And now we're going to try our honu. It's actually called kurmasana, kurmasana in yoga or in Sanskrit. So let's bring our chest forwards. Now I'm not going to be able to do the full expression. And if you are, I'm impressed. Take a picture, send it to me. Um, what we're going to do is lower our chest to the floor. Use an exhale breath to draw your navel in. And when you get to a nice comfortable position, you feel like you can hang out for a couple breaths, see if it's available to bring your arms over your legs. So they're stretched straight over towards your feet. This is a great place to remember, bend your knees. So one of the beautiful things they talk about in Kurmasan pose is that we are like a turtle, we don't rush. We take our time to get into the pose and we take our time to come out. So now bend your knees a little bit. And our first variation would be just to float the arms over the legs. And again, your chest is gently guiding down to the floor. Variation two would be to bring your arms under your legs. Again, this takes time. Not like I do this every day, but I've been practicing this pose for almost 20 years. So once you arrive, you get to a comfortable position and go into a bit of yin yoga where you just see if you can relax and let go just a little bit more. This might be the most awkward, strange pose you've ever done. And eventually we'll get to a place where our knees are totally straight. So take one more breath here, really gently honor where you're at. Be happy with your breath. Good, and then ever so gently we'll release. Let's start by taking the arms 
out and bringing them just straight out in front. Hi, Puka Dog. And Puka was named from the shells that we find on the beaches in Hawaii. Gently walk back, take about two breaths to arrive all the way up. So the puka is the name, is the hole in the shell. So gently we're going to come back up. Oh, sorry. We're going to come back up. And then we're going to lower ourselves to the floor. Look it up. We named her puka. She came with the name Princess. And puka just made way more sense. Because both our dogs, luckily, they're rescue dogs with a big white hole or a big white tuxedo. All right, before you make your way to the floor, we haven't done this for a minute, so let's do our boat pose, our Navasana. We're gonna lean back slightly, we're gonna take the hands behind the thighs and gently guide the feet up. So you're on about, you're on about, <laughs> I'm gonna say you're on about an angle, a nice beautiful angle, 45 degree angle through the thighs and through the back and you just engage that core area and then perhaps let your hands release. Look out past your feet. If not, just hold. And if you want to come into full boat pose, you can raise up your legs or maybe try one at a time. And notice we start to shake and vibrate. 78,000 nerves here telling us what's going on. One more breath. Hold your variation. Good, and then we're gonna make our way slowly to the ground. So release your feet down. Okay. And then let's take our whole spine down to the floor and gently just roll onto your back. That should feel really nice. Let's release the legs long. We're gonna do a nice little spinal twist just to finish off our day. Let's draw the knees up. Let's bring the arms out to the sides, shoulder height. And we're gonna release our right leg to the ground. So one leg spinal twist, draw your left knee in and up. You might even take your right hand on that knee. You can adjust your hips to the left a couple of inches and then on an exhale breath, gently guide your knee down to the right. This should feel good, so enjoy. Maybe you take a moment, you look over your left extended arm and you feel this beautiful wash or rinse or release of your spinal energy. Let it go. Let it go. Every single breath, every single day, we get a chance to find our breathing, honor the fact that we've woken up and that's a miracle, and then we have this beautiful day together. Good. Let's release our right arm now. Gently come back up to being flat on your spine, and then you can release that left leg down to the floor. Right knee floats up, left hand on the knee. You can adjust your hips over to the right an inch or two, and use an exhale breath to guide that knee down. Your right arm and shoulder should stay rooted and grounded, and you're already starting your cool down. You're starting to just wind it down. Again, maybe you close your eyes. You can look over your right extended arm. And as my beautiful dog, Kekau, taught me, just breathe. This dog has a message too, Puka Dog. Her message is be here now. And I was lucky enough to hear her message while she's still in her doggy body, which she will be for a really long time. All right, let's gently come up to center. Nice breathing happening. Take a moment, you can use your hand for help. Big inhale and exhale to come out of the pose. Lower your right foot down, hips to the left, and then we'll gently just lower that left leg to the floor. One of my favorite ways to finish things off, be like a bug on its back, and if you prefer a happy baby pose, you can do that too. Bring up your hands and your legs and just shake, shake, shake. For happy baby, take hold of your feet or back of the thighs. And you just want to come into a little bit of a hip opener, a hip stretch, and a little bit of a shake, a little bit of a softening and a loosening and a letting things go. I think you got the 
bone out. Now it's underneath something. You'll have to come back to it later, bud. Good, let's release the feet and the hands. Let's float the arms down by our sides. And we're gonna finish off our practice by coming into Shavasana, full of corpse pose. If you can stay here for a while, that's amazing. If you've got to get up and get your day going, that's fine too. And maybe you're at the end of the day and you're ready for a beautiful night's sleep and you're starting to wind things down. Wherever you are right now, I'd like you to imagine having an amazing sleep tonight. Just take a couple breaths. Know that we all think all kinds of foolish thoughts and in my Buddhist teacher's special way of saying it, said maybe we'll think less stupid thoughts today than yesterday. <laughs> so be like a magnificent honu or turtle. Feel your home is with you. Know that you are greatly loved. And I will share my favorite five mantras that I say to myself every single day. And you can repeat after me in your mind or even out loud. I am safe and free. And really see if you can imagine, be it for a moment. And then your next mantra, I am healthy and happy. And then the last one, I am loved. Hey, buds. Thank you. Oh, it's in there. Good. So take a couple more deep breaths when you're feeling it. Bend your knees. Roll onto your side. Use your strong arms. Push the ground away. And then arrive in your most comfortable seated position. The puppy is 10 months old. The princess is five years old. I know you were wondering, how old are these rescue dogs? Rescue don't shop if available. But I understand it's really hard to get dogs around now. So do your best advocacy, cats, dogs, animals, turtles. Little shout out to my friend Gail who saved many, 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 many turtles and help them get to the ocean by cleaning the beaches near Puerto Vallarta, Nuevo Vallarta, and helping all these beautiful little turtles have a chance to be a big turtle like us. I wish you the best day ever. I wish you a wonderful sleep tonight. And may your sense of fantasy and awe grow with the beautiful energy of the turtle. So let's bring the hands together at the heart. We'll bow the head just a little bit. We dedicate the merits of our class to all sentient beings. May all beings be relieved of their suffering. And may we dwell together with great fruitfulness and harmony. The light in me honors and sees the light in you. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Aloha.